Chuck. Yes. I have an idea for an explainer. Okay. And it's just, I just want to riff on plants and animals. Okay. I don't know if there's a lesson in here or insights, but I just have a lot of thoughts. I'm just going to sort of spill them out. Right okay. Away. Well, okay, here's can, my can first we allow- thought. Both delicious. <laughs> All right. So here, here, I just want to just share some points of view. So, uh, do you remember all of the the uh, concerns people had about uh, tuna being caught oh God, yes. by nets? Right. And the issue wasn't that tuna were being caught by nets; it was that the nets were, were trapping hurting dolphins. Dolphins. Right, because and... dolphins aren't delicious. And- <laughs> no. And tuna is. <laughs> no, that wasn't. Okay, so the, the argument was in the net, the, the tuna can breathe, but the dolphin can't. Right. Because a dolphin is an air breather and it doesn't breathe in the water. Right. So you kill the dolphins if the net doesn't come up quick, quickly enough. Yeah, you drown right. them. Okay, and basically they drown. All right. So. Um, Which, by I the way, ne- I'm, I'm just going to say, whether you believe in a god or not, if I breathe air and I live in the water, maybe there's something wrong with that design. <laughs> you had it coming to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of were asking for it. Okay? For like, it. you breathe air, but you live in the water? <laughs> and when you drown, you kind of had it coming. Right. I, I was just saying. All right. Well, well, here's something about the dolphin. Because it breathes and eats from two different orifices in its body, uh-huh. it means it can't choke while eating, the way we can. How you like that? Well, I got. There's say, no dolphin that ever choked from eating a pastrami sandwich. I'm just saying. This is true. Now, that that, however, is not a design flaw for us, because I don't want to look at somebody with a butthole in their neck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. All right, so, so it's a it's a design failure for us and a design feature for the dolphin, there even you go. though they're swimming in the water. All right. right. Here's my point. The fact that we're protecting the dolphins but eating the tuna, I remember thinking to myself, why doesn't anybody care about the tuna? Right? It's it's also a big fish. All right. It, it had a life in the ocean. And so I realized that we have species bias among us. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with them. Um, we we know, have species bias. We're saying... I don't want to admit what you're saying is true. And I, we don't want to admit it. I, we well, don't, I don't want to admit it, but... We, we don't like to admit it. Yeah, But, but it's there. Know, I just want right. to reveal this in case people hadn't thought it through. All right? So we're saying we value the dolphin over the... No, we're not talking about vegetarians here who would eat neither. But for those who would eat the, the, the tuna... tuna and specifically not eat the dolphin because it's a mammal. So what you're saying is that in the tree of life, which has fungus and bacteria and plants and animals, you have taken this slender branch in that tree of life called mammals, which is a offshoot from vertebrates, okay? Mm-hmm. So both dolphins and, and, and tuna are vertebrates, but dolphins are a spinoff of that called mammals, and they lactate, they give live birth, as do we. So we are saying you are close enough to us that we value your life above other life on this tree of life. And some people said, no, it's not that they're mammals, it's that they have big brains. Their brain right, is they're larger than us. A okay, lot of so people now say we're that. saying, now we're saying. We value them because they have big brains. Okay. All right. Whatever rules you want to invoke, I just want to make sure people fully understand that every living thing on earth is as far away from an evolutionary uh, uh, place from the very first single-celled life as is all other life on earth. Okay, so you're saying, oh, the brain is important for survival. Oak trees are still alive today, and they don't have any brains, okay? And they're doing just fine. Earthworms are doing just fine. And they coexist with us 
four and a half billion years after the Earth has formed. So, all I'm saying is that whatever struggles, trials, and tribulations we went through as vertebrate mammals, okay, uh, whatever we went through, every single other living thing on this Earth has also survived to this point, species that is, or evolved to fit this point. So, and so you want to value judge it? This is a mammal, this has a brain. All right, but have you stopped and thought about what a tree is? A tree is defenseless. Outlives you. But, but it can't stop me from chopping it down so it doesn't have a say in this. Because <laughs> I, okay. I will chop down that oak tree and build a boat and then take that earthworm and catch a tuna and <laughs> eat it. <laughs> Damn, Chuck, you violated all of <laughs> Chuck, don't play. All right, but you know what the oak tree will do? It won't budge when you careen off the road in your car. This is true. Okay, the mass of that oak tree vastly exceeds you plus your automobile. And so many people have not survived an encounter with a tree. Well, as a survivor, I can tell you that you're absolutely right, and Geico knows it. Geico knows it. And the tree (laughs) is delivering oxygen to the air cyclically through the seasons that we breathe. And one of the most famous poems ever penned was about trees. Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Well, I thought it was Joyce Kilmer. Oh, is is that Joyce Kilmer? I, I... I think, I think so. that I shall never see a, yeah, a poem a, lovely, as a, lovely tree. as a tree. So for me, I it. like artists, and in this case, poets. I don't need them to commemorate amazing facts and, and famous events. I need them to remind me of what I no longer pay attention to. And for me, that's why that poem rose up. That's a beautiful thought. Yeah, it just forces you to reflect on it. So uh, not Here, only here's that. Here's a problem so far with your suppositions and your premise. No one has ever written a poem about a tuna. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> if yeah, they did, I'm it's sure not there, famous. Yeah, I'm sure there's a Japanese person somewhere that wrote a poem about a tuna. Uh, but yeah. the, the, but it's, it's, it's sushi tuna. It's yes, not exactly. the tuna. Sushi not grade. The exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't so, no bumblebee. <laughs> We're not talking about no bumblebee. <laughs> so here's my point. So we go through this tree of life and cherry pick it for things we like for whatever reasons we invoke at the time. And we could be influential on others and gather groups of people to feel the same way about that. So you will not kill an animal to eat it, but you will slaughter all manner of plant life and eat it. So you're okay with that but not eating the animals. You have judged that your side of the tree of life is more important than this other side of the tree of life. And there's another very important point I want to make. Even sticking with the animal side of the tree of life, because we're animals and we're, even, even so, we prefer the fuzzy, cuddly ones. All right, we, we prefer, you know, why is it that the squirrel is cute but the opossum is nasty, all right? Is it because the opossum doesn't have hair on its tail? Yes. And it's not bushy and it Absolutely. doesn't look at you? It's ugly, all yes. right? So we are value judging animals on their beauty for what we want to protect and what we don't. There are things that we would, most of us would just as soon not have, like lethal viruses, like ticks, like mosquitoes, like right. like bacteria, you know, dysentery. These are life forms that we share the earth with. You know, where, where is the community of people that's saying, save the ticks, all right? Somehow we're all okay exterminating them, killing them, getting them out of the, but well, because they carry disease, uh, or, or uh, not only the ticks, the, who are the jumpers? The um, fleas. The fleas, okay? The fleas, all by all account, carry the bubonic plague. If, you, if the world never had another flea, you probably wouldn't miss it. But that meant you would be exterminating a branch of the tree of life, a species in the tree of life, because it's not convenient for you. And so I, we are about to completely eradicate the, the, there's a worm, what's it called? The guinea worm. Guinea worm. Which only affects humans. 
All right, we're about to completely eradicate that. We basically eradicated smallpox, all right? Well, what about the smallpox microbes, all right? How do they feel about this? So well, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying- They need to get you, a lawyer just like everybody else. <laughs> To, 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 to plead to their case. To defend the fact that they should be here. So I, I'm, not, I'm not landed anywhere. I just think about all of life and all the struggles that life had to go through to get to where it is today in the tree of life, four and a half billion years after life began. Wow. And so when I, when I eat lettuce or cucumber, I'm thinking, uh, you know, like as they say with the Native Americans, I, I'm thankful to the plant and he, in the same way, I'm thankful to the pig or the cow or the, you know, whatever else. These are things that were alive. Keep in wow. mind, we're kind of stuck killing in order to survive. As primitive as that might be in the galaxy, it's that anything you can digest was once alive, be it plant or animal. So we live on a planet where all animals Kill other living things to survive. All animals. Ugh, Every wow. single one of them up and down. When Earth you, when is brutal, man. Boot, boot, birth is <laughs> Earth is brutal. <laughs> People talk about, oh, let's get in harmony with nature. Nature is in balance. Nature was never in balance. You go in there, it's like dog eat dog or plant eat plant kill plant. Oh, uh, let me put shade on you. Now I got the sunlight and you don't. All right? all right. And you wither and die and some other plant and the animal eats you. And it is, it is. Yeah, it, it feels like it's equilibrium from season to season, but you step back year to year, decade to decade, century to century, there is stuff shifting all the time. So I, I just think of all life as sacred. And I don't, having, after having done so, I don't value judge one life over another based on its proximity to us on the tree of life, because it's all here and we're all sharing the same earth. If yeah, I were to yeah. design Earth differently, I'd have everybody have to go through photosynthesis. And you wouldn't have to kill anything. Right. Just go out and sunbathe. I got my day's energy today. All right, let's go running, you know? <laughs> oh, God, I have a beautiful tan and I'm so full. I am so full of energy. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So aliens that might only thrive on photosynthesis from their host planet or its equivalent will come here and wonder what the hell is wrong with humans. Wow, man. Listen. This is... I don't mean to get all deep on you here, but I this just is, to, I mean, this is I really some deep philosophical stuff, man. I think about it all the time when I'm preparing food. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And I don't want to be speciesist. I want to be... How about this? What? How about this? How about if I just cut the leaves off of plants, but I never take the plant down, I just prune the plant and I eat the parts of the plant. Like, like if I were to harvest children, but only eat their fingers... What, what? what? <laughs> no, no, here, here, here it would be. It's you, you, you harvest colonies of newts and you bite off their legs and tails. Tails they'll regrow and they'll their grow legs back. And tail. They'll yeah, grow back. right. How about that? That's a new diet. The newt but diet. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I don't know. I, this was not, a, was this an explainer video? I don't know. It was more just me sharing with you some of my uh, daily thoughts. I don't know, man. I, we're, we're definitely going to get some feedback on this one, man. I, yeah. but I, I think it's a very interesting premise to ponder because it challenges our biases and causes us to reassess our perspectives because most of what we are assigning value to is done so based on what we deem valuable, right. period, right. period. Yeah. yeah, the brain, it's a spinal column. Mam you know, mammal features. Yeah, it's right. just, we've made a judgment. And I don't, I don't know that I'm prepared to do that because I respect all life. And until we have organizations that say, save the ticks, um, I, you know, save the roaches, save the rats. Um, now, I'm just going to say that back in the late 80s, uh, when I used to do this, we did have a little save the roaches, like, uh, consortium, but it was a different kind of roach. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> hey, man, you going to throw that away? No, man. Wait, and speaking <laughs> of animals, you needed the alligator clip to hold the roach. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking at them.